Now today, we're going to talk about something that doesn't even apply to us. And you say, why are we talking about it? Because it will. And for some of you, it already has. What's that? Medicare. Medicare, you say, I have to be 65. You're right. And that's my first point, is that you have to be 65 to apply for Medicare. The month of your birthday is when you actually are eligible. However, three months before your birthday and three months after your birthday, you can apply. That's a seven month window of time. And I'm mentioning this right off the bat because if you do not, and then you get around to it a year or two later, maybe you don't think you need it, or maybe it just slipped your mind, well, then you will be assessed a penalty. And that penalty will be tacked on to your monthly premium every month from then on. And it will add up over time. And as things change within Medicare and the prices go up naturally, your fine will be reassessed also. So that's why I'm doing this today, because I realize some of you are 64, you are 50 plus, and you are looking into this and it can be very confusing. Now, let me just preface also that I'm not a Medicare expert. However, I read a lot. I ask questions. I dig a little deeper than the average person just because I want to find out these things ahead of time. I'm a firm believer that we want to learn how to swim well before we ever fall out of the boat. So that's part of what we're doing when we reimagine our lives and we move towards living our best life. We plan ahead and we do things that we don't have to do them right now. And I'm not saying everybody here who is in their 50s needs to jump into this, but there are people that are nearing the time frame. The reason why I'm doing it right now is because there has been a large packet of information delivered to those of you who are already signed up for Medicare. And this is called the Annual Notice of Change. Now this is a big packet and you may see it come in the mail and think, oh boy, that's going to take a chunk of my time. Well, guess what? Get your highlighter out and take a chunk of time to sit down and make sure that the benefits that you are going to receive beginning in January will be the benefits that suit you best. So things change prescriptions that you may have been using may fall off their list of uh, qualified prescriptions, or maybe a doctor that you have been seeing will no longer be a part of this program. So you definitely want to go through and make sure that when you get the annual notice of change, you don't do what so many people do, and that is everything's great. It all worked fine this last year. Let's roll it into the next year because it may not roll into the next year the same way. Because your ability to make changes in your program begins October 15th and that's just a couple of weeks away. So I wanted to get this video out there for those of you who are looking at uh, making changes. You've already been enrolled in the program, and we're going to talk about how to do that too. But just right out of the gate, I wanted to mention that when that packet comes in the mail, don't shove it aside. Take some time. Go through it. Look at what might affect you personally. And then when you're able to make changes, if you want to and need to, then when October 15th rolls around, you're ready. You've planned ahead. You know how to swim. So, Let's back up a little bit and talk about who's eligible. You have to be 65 to qualify for the Medicare. Now, what happens is that if you are married to someone who is not 65, they will have to get their own policy when they turn 65. So in the meantime, you'll want to be looking at what can they do as far as coverage, especially if you are the one that carried the coverage for the both of you. So look into that, make sure that you're doing what you need to do for your coverage. And then when it's their turn, you'll be the expert and you can help them navigate those rough waters. So let's talk about a couple of other things that are a little confusing. People wonder what's with all these acronyms and part this and part that. Well, there's part A and part B. Part A has to do with your hospitalization. Part B has to do with your daily care, preemptive type care. 
necessary services, things that you probably are used to using now. So Part A and Part B are what you will be signing up for through Medicare. And if you do this in that window of time, remember you have seven months to do this. If you do this in the window of time, there is no penalty, there is nothing. As a matter of fact, you are accepted without any kind of uh, health uh, review. So if you wait and you don't do it in this window of time, then you will be assessed a penalty. I call it a penalty because it's a fine, it's a fee that gets tacked on to any premium that you pay for the rest of your life. So I don't care if it's $2, I don't want to pay it. So you want to be ahead of the game and do this. So part A, part B are the two things that you will be basically getting, but there are some variations, of course. Now, before I get too far past part A and part B, let's talk about part D. Part D has to do with your prescriptions. Now, some of you may not need any prescriptions at this point, and that's terrific. But remember, we're putting a plan into place that will affect us over the next 10, 15, 20, 30 years. So you probably will want to consider getting the prescription aspect called Part D. Part D is also something that if you do not sign up for it, you will be assessed a 1% penalty and that gets tacked on to your monthly premiums forever. So you don't want that. And if there is a reason why you're not getting the prescription aspect, um, you want to make sure it's a good reason because you don't want to have to pay for that forevermore. So something that you also should consider whenever you sign up for Part D is make sure that your prescriptions are covered, especially if you're already on uh, maybe something that's very specialized. You want to look into that ahead of time. Now let's talk about a variation. We talked about Part A and Part B. What's Part C? Well, Part C has to do with the different type of coverage that you can get instead of B, and that is called Medicare Advantage. It works like an HMO in that you will be going to their doctors within the network, within the area. So why would you want this? Well, it might work out to be cheaper for you. If you are always in the same area, let's say you have relocated and you are firmly ensconced in your new neighborhood and community, and you know this is where you're going to be, it's your happy place, then this might be a good plan for you. However, if you are a snowbird and you like to travel a lot and you're going to be going to visit your kids or your grandkids four months out of the year, you won't be in the same area. And so the Medicare Advantage might not be an advantage for you. There is something else called Medigap. Now what's a Medigap? A Medigap is an additional piece of insurance that you pay for, but it is a secondary insurance. So whatever Part A and Part B doesn't cover with your basic Medicare, you fill in the gap with this secondary Medicare coverage. So it pays for you to get in there, do your research, find out what works for you, where you're at health-wise right now, what won't work maybe 15 years from now, and try to make some decisions. Um, it's not an easy thing to navigate, and we certainly don't want to be navigating these rough waters when we don't know how to swim. So we're learning ahead of time, and we're taking steps to ensure a healthy, happy, future. And when we turn 65, this is something that most of us have paid into and we are able to reap the rewards of it. Now, if you would like some more information, I stumbled upon a great website called boomerbenefits.com and I thought that they were very helpful. I had also gone to the Medicare website itself and I found that to be very useful and helpful. I hope this helps. I hope that it helps you navigate those rough waters 
and be prepared. Next time, we're going to talk more about moving into a new location. And certainly, as we move into a new location, those of you who are moving as we speak, you don't want this packet to get lost in the mail. So we're going to talk about that later. Okay, thanks for joining me. See you next time.